Hey folks, welcome to episode two of Classroom Hatchery Television. Today is an exciting day because this morning I drove to the fish hatchery and picked up the stars of our program, 200 Atlantic salmon eggs. But before I get started today, I want to tell you something really cool about Atlantic salmon. A tale about Atlantic salmon. A tale of a tale. Looking here at Sandy, we can see that Atlantic salmon have large, powerful tails. And this is super important for Atlantic salmon. You see, an Atlantic salmon like Sandy, who is a female by the way, will lay thousands of eggs in a year. And she does this in a gravel nest called a red. She'll use her powerful tail to make a hole in the gravel, and then she lays her eggs into the red. A male Atlantic salmon comes along and fertilizes the eggs before she comes back and uses her powerful tail to cover the eggs up with the gravel. The eggs hatch and the young fish live in the cold water stream before they'll swim down into Lake Ontario where they grow big into adults. When it's time for them to spawn, which is their reproductive process, they'll use this mighty tail to swim upstream, sometimes against really powerful currents and rapids to reach their spawning grounds. Sometimes they'll come to the bottom of small waterfalls. And this fish, using this powerful tail, can jump up to three meters high, which is about the same height as a basketball net. This is what's given Atlantic salmon the nickname of the leaping salmon. Last week we set up all of the equipment and since then I've been coming in every couple of days to check to make sure all of the equipment is functioning properly and fine tuning the knobs on the chillers to get the temperature that we want. So on tank one we're aiming for four degrees Celsius and on tank two seven degrees Celsius. Before we put the eggs into the tank let's have another hatchery check. Starting with tank one we can see that our filter is running. We've got the little waterfall coming out of it. The air pump is functioning. There's bubbles coming out of the air stone. And looking at the thermometer on tank one, the left hand side is Celsius. And each one of the lines represents one degree Celsius. So we're sitting just a touch below four degrees Celsius. And so that's actually perfect. Let's check tank number two. Okay, so for tank number two, the filter's running, the little waterfall's coming out of it, bubbles are coming out of the air stone, and our temperature is sitting right at seven degrees Celsius. And by checking our temperature, we also are checking on our chiller to make sure that our chiller is working properly. So everything is good with our hatchery, now we can go and have a look at our eggs. I picked up the eggs this morning from Harwood Fish Culture Station in Baltimore, Ontario, on the south side of Rice Lake. The good folks at the hatchery place the eggs in small plastic containers with some of the water that the eggs were being stored in at the hatchery. Let's have a look at our eggs. So this is one of our two containers. Believe it or not, there are 100 eggs in each of the containers. People almost always don't believe me that there are that many eggs in the container. So you can either trust me or you're welcome to pause the video and count the eggs. I don't want to put our eggs directly into the tank water. The temperature of the water in the tanks might be slightly different from the temperature in the containers that the eggs are in. So think about on a hot summer day and you jump into a cold pool. You know that feeling, that kind of shocking feeling you get? We don't want to do that to our eggs. That could be harmful to them and maybe even kill them. So what I've done is I've filled up this basin, which is actually a kitty litter container, with water from in the tank. Now we're going to let this sit. The container is just sitting in that water in the basin. And that's going to make it so that it slowly balances in temperature. So that by the time we're ready to put the eggs into this incubating tray, then the water that's inside this basin will be 
about the same temperature as the water temperature inside the container. So the eggs won't go through that shock. So we have to wait for a few minutes for that to balance. And while we're waiting, we'll have a close up look at one of our eggs. And then we're going to do a little bit of a tour of where these eggs came from, Harwood Fish Culture Station, and learn about how the hatchery works and the process in how the eggs are collected. Here is one of our eggs viewed under a digital microscope. What do you see here? First off, we see the shell. Unlike the hard shell of other animals like chickens, the Atlantic salmon egg shell is softer and a bit rubbery. If it was hard like a chicken's egg, it would easily crack against the gravel in the red. It is still fragile, but it has a bit of give. We can see these two black dots. What do you think these are? These are the eyes. We call this life stage eyed egg. We see this smile shape. This is the spine of the little fish. We can see the heart beating and a network of blood vessels that stretch into the egg. Similar to a chicken egg, there is a yolk in the middle of the Atlantic salmon egg. The yolk is the food made up of vitamins, minerals, proteins, and fatty acids for the little fish to grow on. During spawning, when the egg came out of its mother, it contained the yolk and some genetic material. At the moment of fertilization from the male fish, the egg was essentially one cell. The cell started to divide and replicate itself in a process called cellular division. Once there were a bunch of identical cells formed, the cells started to specialize into the different parts of the fish. Now let's see where and how we got these eggs. Hey guys, my name is Jenny and I'm the operations coordinator here at Harwood Fish Culture Station. We are one of nine stations across the province that raise 8 million fish for stocking in over 1,200 water bodies. Our job is to raise these fish and stock them to support recreational fisheries and conserve biodiversity. Are you guys ready to come take a look? All of our fish come to us as eyed eggs. You can see the two little black dots are the baby fish inside. The eggs are loaded into incubation trays. They'll stay here for the next few weeks until they are ready to hatch out. Our staff come in every day and remove any of the dead eggs and make sure everything looks okay. Some species of fish produce very sticky eggs. This works fine in nature, but you can imagine it would make a lot of problems in fish culture, especially if we were to keep the eggs like we did for the brook trout. In this case, we use what's called a bell jar. It adds water continuously from the bottom and keeps the eggs moving, preventing them from sticking together and suffocating. These guys will continue to stay here until they start to hatch out. Once the eggs hatch, we put the fry, or baby fish, into what we call a super trough. It allows us to keep a close eye on them and continue to monitor their health and growth. You'll see these guys have a big orange belly. That's called a yolk sac, and they'll use that as their nutrients until it's all gone, at which point they'll have to come to the surface looking for food. When they do that, it's called a swim up fry, and at that point we would drop them down into these much larger tanks. Here are some slightly older brook trout fry. You can see that their yolk sac is almost gone and they'll begin to start swimming to the surface looking for feed. These fish are incredibly sensitive at this stage and require a lot of care from our technicians. As fish get older, they don't require near as much care from our staff. They become fairly self-dependent and all they require is routine feeding and cleaning. Some of our units are equipped with an automatic feeder that calculates their growth weight and predicts how much to feed every day. This is Harwood's early rearing section. We raise fish in here from the egg stage till about four months old, at which point they get too big and we have to put them downstairs where they have more space to grow. Let's go check it out. 
This is our advanced rearing. As you can see, we've got some circular tanks and a bunch of big raceways. Harwood is called a two-pass system because water flows into these upper raceways and then is reused down here in these raceways in order to get more bang for our buck in terms of our water usage. In these tanks, we keep a variety of different fish. Here are some rainbow trout that are going to be stocked in the next few months. Fish stay in our system for about 18 months until they're ready to be stocked out. Every day our technicians come down to feed the fish, clean the tanks, and check on water quality for things like oxygen, lighting, and turbidity. Here's one of our smaller stocking trucks that we use to transport fish. When we're ready to stock the fish, we fill the tanks with water, load them with fish, turn on the oxygen, and we're good to go. Although we stock most of our fish, some of the fish we keep around until they hit adulthood. We use those fish as our future supply of eggs. We call these fish our brood stock. During the spawning season, we check the fish to make sure they are ripe. Ripe means if a fish is ready to produce eggs or not. This is an adult rainbow trout. Every single fish is tagged with a unique microchip the size of a grain of rice. When we're ready to spawn, we scan each fish using a pit tag reader, and that gives a unique numerical code. Eggs are collected from each female by applying constant pressure across the abdomen. Each female can contain up to 3,000 eggs. Milt is collected in the same manner. Once the milt is added to the eggs, we need to add water to activate both the eggs and the sperm to begin the fertilization process. We gently swirl the eggs to ensure even mixing of the milt and to make sure every egg has contact with sperm. After letting the eggs and milt sit together for about a minute, we then have to rinse the eggs to remove any bad eggs, unused milt, and dirty water. When washing the eggs, we try to be as careful as possible to not damage any of them. Once we have removed all the bad eggs, we remove all of the remaining water and put the eggs into a disinfectant liquid to reduce the chance of infection from the parents. After disinfection, the eggs are left to water harden for two hours. When that's done, we measure the size of each of the eggs using a Von Bayer trough. You create a single line of the eggs and count how many fit inside the trough. After measuring out all the eggs, they are again disinfected to remove any diseases and bacteria, and then they are placed into incubation stacks where they will stay for the next four weeks. Well guys, thanks for joining me and I hope you enjoyed your tour. I think it's really neat to be part of an organization that helps make sure that these guys are available for us to enjoy for years to come. Thank you for that, Jenny. At this point, I'm going to add some salt to our tank water. Why add salt? Now you might think, well, these are Atlantic salmon and the Atlantic Ocean is salty. And while that's a good thought, you've got to remember that for our fish, they live as young in fresh, cold water streams before they swim down into Lake Ontario where they live as adults. And Lake Ontario, of course, is also fresh water. So they'll spend their entire lives in fresh water. I'm going to add this salt to our tank water because it'll kill some of the fungus and parasites that might affect the health of our fish. 
The normal range of ocean salinity, which is the amount of salt in the ocean water, is between 33 to 37 grams of salt per liter of water. I'm going to be adding 3 grams per liter to our tank water. So the salinity of seawater is over 10 times of that what our tank water is going to be. Okay, so I just pour the salt into the water and the salt will dissolve into our water. And I'll do that to both tanks. And just checking between the two temperatures, temperature of the basin water and the temperature of the container water, that is about the same. So now we can go ahead and start to load our eggs into the incubating tray. The incubating tray, also known as a condo, has 200 cells in it. And so we have 100 eggs, so we're going to be half filling this incubating tray. And um, we want to have it so that an egg has its own cell. And you can see that the, the cells are fairly large on this. So it's going to be hard for me to just make it so that I only have one egg in a, in a cell. So to help me with that, I'm going to be using this loading tray. And the loading tray also has 200 cells, but instead of, instead of a big deep cell, it's more of a dimple. And so only one egg can fit into the dimple. And then once I have them loaded into here, this will fit together with my incubating tray and I'm able to transfer them over. So that's what I'm going to do now. All right, so I'm going to put the loading tray into the basin and I hold that down so that I don't have any eggs slip underneath uh, where they might get squished. And then I'm just going to slowly pour the eggs out. Try and spread them around. And a few are rolling off, but that's okay. Get those after. So you can see that I have some eggs that aren't in a, in a dimple and I also have some eggs that have rolled off the loading tray. So I have a high-tech scientific tool here. Uh, this one I believe actually comes from our friend Elon over at SpaceX. Uh, no, this one's actually from Dairy Queen. Um, uh, so I can just use this to now just make a little bit of a current and you can see that the eggs move around and I can move them into dimples. And then once I got all the ones that are still on the tray to a spot, I'll go around and start collecting the ones that rolled off. You can imagine what this looks like from the fish's perspective, looking out those eyes. I've got a few that are sitting out here in this spot, so I'm going to be very careful in lifting this up now, getting those ones. And once I've got them all, loading tray. Pour some water over the top of it just in case there's some eggs that are stuck in the loading tray. Definitely check to make sure nobody's stuck in there. And we'll grab the other side. And I should point out as well that you'll see that on the tray there's these little cross hatches. And those cross hatches are going to allow 
oxygenated water to flow through the cell because the eggs do need some oxygen as well. And then this just fits over the top there. And then there's some nuts and bolts. And now this one is ready to go into tank number two, because that's the water I got out of here. So it's a little bit warmer than in tank number one. Okay, so you'll notice when I put this into here, into the tank, it wants to float. And that's because it's got air in it. So what I'm gonna do, I need to make sure the cross hatches are gonna end up on the bottom. And I've got to get the air out. You can see the bubbles coming out. I'm going to pin this to the glass with some of these rocks that you can easily see in and watch the eggs develop. I'm just piling rocks up behind it to hold the incubating tray in place. And there we have it. So that one's installed. I'm going to do the same thing to the other one. And then uh, they're all set up. Our Atlantic salmon have their new homes in our hatchery units. Thanks again to Jenny and the rest of Harwood Fish Culture Station for the tour and for providing the eggs for our program. Next week, we're gonna be learning about how to identify Atlantic salmon. Until then, keep on swimming upstream. Mm -hmm.